When most people leave their job, there doesn't really, there's not usually a fuss. Some CEOs, there's a fuss and there's a scandal and there's lots of skinner, but mostly the company tends to move on without any thrills or fuss. But when my guest this evening left his last post, it sent the rand plummeting to below 15 to the US dollar. It cost the economy hundreds of millions, if not billions of rand. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight I'm joined by Nsantla Nene, South Africa's former finance minister, to talk about what he's been up to in the last eight or nine months or so, but also talk about the current economic climate, the global environment in which we find ourselves, the role he's playing as resident advisor to Teb Investment Corporation. He's also on the board of Alan Gray. And if there's time, we may touch on some recent news stories as well. What have you been up to? It's been, what, nine months? You could have had a baby in this time <laughs> since, <laughs> Indeed, uh, since the 9th of December last year. Indeed, Bruce. Um, and actually, uh, part of uh, uh, my labor at the farm at my wife's farm, actually, uh, we're already harvesting. Uh, we're harvesting some cabbages which I planted during my gar gardening leave, and um, many other uh, uh, things. How, how much time did you take off after the National Treasury? Because you went very quiet for a long period of time. Yeah, five, uh, I mean, yeah, about five months uh, from December. Uh, no, 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 slightly less, because I started with Alan Gray in April and uh, with Tebe on the 1st of, uh, of May. Do you need time to defrag a bit like a computer does when, uh, when it's a little bit, a bit overloaded? Actually, it was the excitement of reconnecting with the family and the community <laughs> and, um, and, the, you know, and nature, the farm, animals, plants. Where's the farm? It's a small, yeah, I call it a farm, but mm -hmm. it's actually a small 22 hectare garden in, uh, in Rosulu Natal, in Kranskop, small village. You will need a micro uh, uh, scope to yeah. actually see it on the map. Um, yeah, but it's a good place to go just to Absolutely. figure out what to do next. <coughs> Absolutely, it was fantastic, um, and that's why I actually kept on postponing um, <laughs> my new engagement until I realized that my wife was, uh, um, you know, getting irritated with me, you know, uh, playing but playing foreman at the at the at the farm. But that story is universal. I mean, you talk to any retired executives, anybody who's been in a senior position anywhere, you, you're wired in a particular way, and you're, mm. it's nice to have you around for a bit, but then you become yeah. a bit of a pain in the neck. A nuisance. A <laughs> real nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> I started asking her, she comes to the farm late, um, around eight, and I say, but you're making it a habit to come late. And she said, no, but who's the boss here? <laughs> you better find a job. <laughs> and, um, it's then that I realized I needed to move on. But, but that came uh, in the form of Alan Gray. Did you have lots of approaches? I got a number of approaches, and um, I was uh, not in, uh, in a position to take any. And, but in January, when were, were you precluded from taking jobs? Or not really. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I was, I was available. Okay. And, uh, but I just thought it's an opportunity of a lifetime having to reconnect. You know, mm. I always tell a story of um, my daughter who, when I returned home on the 10th of December, was so pleased, and when everybody else wanted to know what had happened, all she wanted to know was whether they now have 100% of, um, of their dead. How old are your kids? Uh, the boy is uh, 30, um, the girls, the other one is 25, the other one is 19, she just started varsity this year. People underestimate the huge <coughs> pressure that, particularly ministers in the Treasury, are, are under. I mean, it is literally a 24-7 job, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it keeps you, I mean, people would uh, always ask um, how I sleep, and I would tell them that I sleep like a baby. And uh, they wouldn't understand what a baby does. A baby sleeps and wakes up every two hours in Christ. <laughs> so that's what uh, you would do. But um, it's actually a wonderful experience because mm. you learn a great deal. And uh, I would um, want to believe that after that um, kind of work, there is no amount of pressure that would actually put you down. Mm. No, but I mean, you, you, you also, you oversaw the Treasury, you, you worked for Trevor Manuel as deputy, you Absolutely. worked for, for Prevan Gordon as deputy, you were then elevated to the position of, of finance minister for, for 18 months or, yeah. or, or thereabouts. Yeah. I recall seeing you at an insurance conference in July last year, yes. and I have found out that you'd been a financial advisor in your time. You'd actually worked for Metropolitan. Absolutely. And even then, mm. You still had clients from the olden days as a financial advisor phoning you and asking you about their policies. Yeah. Have those calls stopped yet? No, they haven't, actually. Those <laughs> that have re retired, they still come back to me. And I'm quite happy to actually be of assistance to them <laughs> if I can. But um, how do I help? I refer yeah. them to, to the guys that are still in the job. And um, yeah. I mean, um, fortunately, I still have a very good relationship with them. When you look back at the 9th of December last year, well, the, 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 the days running up to the 9th of December, there'd been rumours on the Monday that there was a short list of a cabinet reshuffle. And everybody I spoke to in those days before the Wednesday night uh, when the, the statement came out after eight said, 
said, yeah, those guys, yeah, 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 not Nene. Nobody's going to be mad enough to fire the finance minister. <laughs> I mean, that came, did that come as a bolt out of the blue? Well, everything is impossible until it really happens. Mm. But um, I had seen that in the morning also. But, um, well, I mean, I had always uh, known that uh, our deployment is not a five-year deployment. It's actually a 24-hour deployment. <laughs> so <laughs> you must, you know, mm. uh, that's why you do not leave things undone. Whatever, you know, is for that day, you don't yeah. leave it for the next day. But it, it ended on the 9th of December, 9.12 as people in the Treasury called it. We know what happened after that, the 92 hours that followed. Um, then on the Sunday, did you actually get a call to offer you the job back? No. Which, which, because the report is that you declined no. the job. No, I hear that a lot, but um, I, I never got a call. You didn't? No. I wonder where the story comes from. Have you worked I it know. out? I, you know, they say the, what is it called, the rumor? Yeah, um, the rumor mill is uh, full of stories and non-stories. Um, I mean, I never got a call. If you had, would you have taken the job back? I, I'm not too sure. I, I was beginning to enjoy what I was having in my hands. In fact, I was preparing to go on, on, on holiday because mm. I went on holiday exactly on the yeah. That was the Sunday that I actually mm. drove down to the one, uh, to the south coast. It, was it a personally devastating announcement? I mean, yeah, you would anticipate if you've been appointed, you'll, you'll serve a five-year term, Absolutely. maybe even Trevor Manuel, 13-year term yes. as finance minister. Yeah. You would have expected a tenure, and you would have had plans. You would have had an idea as to how this was going to play out, and yeah. that was cut short. But the fact of the matter is that those were not my plans. Those mm. were the country plans, government plans, the treasury plans. Um, it's for that reason that I actually don't take this, uh, these things personally. They mm. don't belong to you. So whatever it is that you do must uh, be in the interest of the country and you must uh, give it your all. So, yeah, it was a bit of a, a shock, but, you know, um, immediately, you know, I came to my senses, you know, mm -hmm. the term has ended. I, um, it, it created a crisis of confidence in South Africa, which is being perpetuated um, with recent events as well. But did we need that crisis? Did we need you to be fired from your position <laughs> as finance minister to jolt us into <coughs> a level of action that we've seen since pre-Davos, Davos, post-Davos, post -Davos, the meetings, the collaborative business, labor and government alliances that we've seen? Did we need yeah. it? Maybe we did. Um, everything happens for a reason, Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we did because you know what um, happened after that, you know, the relationship between government and the private sector. Actually, I saw that uh, you know, it, it actually uh, um, improved to levels um, we hadn't seen in the past. We tried our best, but I don't think we actually took seriously um, how uh, some of the things we do impact on, on, the, on the broader economy and um, how the, the world and the markets view us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've, we've gone through a, a process and we've, we had a crisis, we've used that crisis well. We now sit potentially in another crisis frame, but it feels different this time. Mm. Well, what's your reading of what's going on right now? Look, I, it's, 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 a, it's a bit, it's, it's concerning. Mm. It's, uh, we are indeed uh, very concerned and I think the whole country is and everybody that um, has, um, you know, the, the interests of the country at heart. And um, we all wish uh, we were not in this space again. Mm. But we're there. We are there and, um, and I, I, I sincerely hope that uh, we actually going to have to put this behind us sooner rather than late because uh, if we don't we actually are on a slippery slope. I mean you, you must feel a, a, a degree of empathy uh, with Pravin Gordon. You Absolutely. worked for him, you yes. succeeded him, Absolutely. he then succeeded, no, he didn't succeed you, he yeah. succeeded <laughs> Des <Desmond> Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, one loses track yeah. you know with yeah. the timeline of these things. Yes. You must feel empathy with him. I do, I do um, and um, I, I mean knowing him I'm actually um, convinced that I mean look he, he can whether the storm, uh, you know, he will be able to deal with the situation himself. But I feel even more for his family because mm. when these things happen, when when you know you can actually, f um, you know, um, uh, face uh, the challenges, um, uh, your family, I mean, is, is not in the same space as you are. But people also, I think, underestimate the enormity of the task of the finance minister. I mean, mm. all government ministers have got a portfolio and it's a big job, but mm. the finance minister's role is extraordinary because it's not just a domestic role, it's a global job. Yeah. You, you, you carry the hopes and aspirations of, um, of the entire country and, um, of course, as part of the collective in government, mm. and, um, but um, the, the responsibility um, falls on your shoulders of making sure that the economy is... Uh, um, steered in the right direction, that the finances uh, of the country 
um, are actually you know in in good hands and uh, spent spent well even though you don't only spend but you also have a responsibility to oversee how those resources are actually spent but beyond that also you also have a responsibility of raising those resources, of making sure that we have adequate resources to be able to um, um, execute um, the country's um, 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 mandate. And in any corporation, in any company, the, you'll have a chief executive, you'll have the finance director, and the finance director can do the job right. if the CEO's got their back. Absolutely. You need, you need your boss to have your you back. You need that backing. Yeah. You do need that backing. Up, uh, I mean, because ultimately, it's not, you, you're not doing it for yourself. It, uh, you are only in most cases, like when you deliver the budget, it is government's uh, policy direction that you are actually putting before mm -hmm. the nation. So on behalf of government. So at the end of the day, you need to have the, the full backing um, of uh, the entire leadership. And, and I think one of the things where South Africa has been incredibly <coughs> fortunate has been the structure of the treasury and the extreme uh, the, the, the talent pool in the treasury and the commitment levels of people in Absolutely. the treasury who in the aftermath of, of your sacking were strong. I mean, absolutely, th yeah. they, they had some scary moments. They did, but they sat yeah. it through. Absolutely, they did. I, I actually took time. Uh, you know, the Monday, the morning after after nine uh, twelve. I mean, I met with um, a few of uh, p people in leadership positions, so just to say to them, look, um, I was only, you know, a, a piece in in the in the entire puzzle. At the end of the day, it's the institution that must stand strong. And um, I think um, we still have a solid institution. But the institution needs committed, solid, dependable, and honest leadership. leadership. Correct. That is true. And we've got it right now. We do. Yeah. Yeah. We do. In, uh, are in you, are you at all afraid for the next six to 12 months for South Africa, based on your personal experience, what you're seeing playing out right now? Look, I, I hope uh, we will have uh, learned uh, lessons from that uh, 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 situation. And um, my view is that uh, we have... Uh, <coughs> An institution that is, you know, on its uh, that's grounded, that is, uh, that has got the talent and the skills that you actually referred to earlier, and that is committed to making sure that South Africa works, and it is also embedded in a, a, a working democracy. I must say we have a, mm. a, a solid democracy. It's a highly functioning democracy right it now. Is. It's a very it is. democracy. It is. <laughs> it is very well functioning, mm -hmm. and institutions supporting that democracy, no matter how um, you know um, we. In, in some instances could be seen to be veering off, but the democracy is solid. <coughs> and the good thing is we have, um, it's a constitutional democracy. We tied ourselves down with the constitution. And um, I think, we have, you know, those checks and balances will always bring us back to our senses. Based on your experience of the last six months, since you signed up with Alan Gray as an non-executive director, more recently with Tebe um, as, as an advisor, you got a two-year contract with them. Based on what you're now experiencing as, uh, as work and life and seeing your kids and occasionally harvesting a cabbage, is there any part of you that wants to go back and be, be finance minister ever again? Not any time soon. <laughs> <laughs> not any time soon. I'm having fun. And, uh, not, I mean, fun in the sense of uh, yeah. really, but I'm actually, you know, um, enjoying my new life and um, I'm learning you know, the business in, in, in both uh, my new employers. But at the same time, um, I would want to make uh, my contribution. Are you still and a political animal? Well, it, 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 it lives in you. <laughs> it mm. lives in you. It doesn't, uh, you know, and it, does, it doesn't leave you. It lives inside you. <coughs> Great pleasure to see you. My, thanks to my guest, Ntlantla Nene, former finance minister, resident advisor to Tebe Investment Corporation, non-executive director at Alan Gray, part-time farmer when he's not getting booted out. There's, there's a pattern here. Finance minister, he got pushed off, went farming, his wife pushed him off. I'm not saying anything <laughs> about that, not saying, not judging, not judging. More issues of national importance, of course, uh, uh, South Africa goes through one of its many cri uh, crises of confidence. But at the core of it, good people, good institutions, making sure that the wheels keep turning. More Moneymakers next time. Thank you for watching. Good night.